Welcome to part 2 of my tutorial on how to upgrade to Unity OpenXR Meta version 2. In part 1, we took the project that we had developed in our tutorial series, how to make a mixed reality app for the Quest 3, and began upgrading it to version 2 of the OpenXR Meta package. So far we've converted the project to Unity 6. We've updated the necessary packages, adjusted some project settings and now have a project that builds without errors. This video assumes that you have completed part 1. If not, please do so before continuing. I've dropped a link in the description. At the end of part 1 we still had some outstanding issues. For one, we lost the color coding on the plane visualization. Additionally, our cube spawning and spatial anchors were not working. In this second part, we will resolve these problems and restore our project to full functionality. OK, let's get straight into it. Open the project you were working on in part 1. First, let's take a look at what warnings we are getting in the project's debug log. Select the Console tab. You can see that we have several warnings. These stem from changes to the AR Foundation API since the previous version. We will edit our scripts to accommodate these changes, and this should restore full functionality to our project. One warning states that ARPlane.classification is obsolete. We shall fix this issue first. Click on the Project tab and select the Scripts folder. In the Scripts folder, double-click the Scene Controller to open it in Visual Studio or Alternative Code Editor. Now, scroll down through the Scene Controller script and find the Spawn Grabbable Cube function. Note the for-each loop that iterates through all of the AR planes. Find the if statement that checks if the current plane has a table plane classification. As mentioned before, plane classification is now obsolete. Instead, we need to use plane classifications. This change allows multiple classifications to be assigned to a single plane. For example, a plane classified as a seat could also be classified as a table at the same time. Anyway, let's modify the if statement to work with the new plane classifications variable. Change the line as follows. Notice that we are using the plane classifications has flag method to check if the plane has been classified as a table. If you were to build your project now, you would see that the grabbable cubes are now spawning again. Next, let's fix the color coding on the plane visualization. Go back to the Unity editor. In the Scripts folder, double click the AR Plane Colorizer script. In the AR Plane Colorizer class, scroll down to the Update Plane Color function. Notice the switch statement, which makes use of the obsolete plane classification enum. Delete the entire switch statement block. We are going to substitute the switch statement with a function called getColorByClassification. I'm going to add this function to the bottom of the class now. We shall call getColorByClassification directly from the UpdatePlaneColor function. Take a look at the first line of this function. Here we declare a color variable called PlaneMatColor. We are going to assign the result of getColorByClassification directly to this variable. This would be a good time to save your scripts. If you were to build and run the app at this point, you would see that the AR plane color coding issue has been fixed. OK. In your code editor, switch back to the Scene Controller script. Just a quick observation. You may have noticed that this XRray Interactor variable type is preceded by a rather long namespace string. This is because the namespace has changed since the last version of XR Interaction Toolkit and the script was automatically modified along with the version update. Anyway, let's scroll down to the bottom of the Start function. Here you can see that we are subscribing to several events. We'll focus on the Planes Changed and Anchors Changed events, which have been upgraded to Unity events. This means we'll need to modify our code accordingly. The way we subscribe to Unity events differs from how we subscribe to standard c -sharp events. I'll change these two lines so that both of these Unity events are subscribed to correctly. You will notice that both the Planes Changed and Anchors Changed events have been substituted with a more generic Trackables Changed event. Switching to the new Unity events means our event handlers are no longer compatible. So let's address those now. The On Anchors Changed event handler is right below the Start function, so we'll fix that one first. First, change the event arguments type to this. Next, within the for each loop, we are going to add an if statement to check that the removed anchor is valid. 
Finally, we need to modify these lines, as we need to use dot value to access the actual anchor. Let us now fix the on planes changed event handler. Scroll down and find it. The only change we need to make to the on planes changed function is to change the event arguments type. Make the following change. Take a look at the print plane label function, which is called from on planes changed. We need to make one tiny modification here. In the first line of print plane label, simply change classification to classifications. Okay? Let's take a look at the onDestroy function at the bottom of the script. Notice that we need to fix how we unsubscribe from our Unity events. Let's do that now. Change these two lines as follows. The last thing we need to fix is the creation of spatial anchors. Scroll up through the script and find the function called create if ray hits collider. This function is called whenever the user presses the trigger on the left-hand controller. It then checks if the ray from the left-hand controller intersects with a collider. If it does, the function should create a plunger game object and attach an AR anchor to it. However, since updating to AR Foundation 6, this function has stopped working. This is because the latest version of AR Foundation now uses an asynchronous method for creating anchors. We will apply this new method in our code and this should resolve the issue. First of all, Let's remove this block of obsolete code that creates an anchor. Let's also remove this line that instantiates a plunger game object. Instead, replace it with the following line. This pose variable will be needed by the new tryAddAnchorAsync method. We are going to write a separate function for creating a spatial anchor and assigning a game object to it. We are going to call it createAnchorAsync. We will execute this function from the check if Ray hits collider method. Let's insert the function call right below the line where we defined our pose variable. OK, let us now add some code to the createAnchorAsync function. I will briefly explain what this code does. The async modifier indicates that the method is asynchronous and intends to use the await keyword. We are passing a pose variable into the method. The pose will define the position and rotation of the anchor. In this case, it is the point at which the ray meets a collider. Now we get to the line that actually adds an AR anchor asynchronously. Note the await keyword. This suspends the execution of the method until the anchor creation task completes. Once the task is completed, we evaluate the result. If an anchor was created successfully, we instantiate a plunger game object, placing it at the same position and rotation as the anchor. Finally, we parent the plunger to the anchor. OK, that should have fixed all of our issues. Please make sure that you save all your scripts then return to the Unity editor. You can now head over to Build Settings and launch a new build. Everything should now be functioning as expected. You should be able to spawn grabbable cubes and place plungers that are attached to spatial anchors. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye and happy questing.